the water temperature of this lake and of the other Great Lakes is so vitally important and it's all linked to, to climate change. All year long, we have been constantly asking what is going on with the weather. It's like a daily conversation from 60 degree days in February to snow in May. And of course, these sweltering hot and just intense summers. Right. Yeah, but well, you know, while we think it's just pure Michigan, it's actually part of a global issue and it is affecting our Great Lakes. Let's get back out live to Ashley Barrissey, who is at Sterling State Park right on the shore of Lake Erie, diving into this problem that we really should take note of. Absolutely. I mean, the extreme weather has been impacting our globe, and we've seen snippets of it here from the wildfire smoke in Canada. We've been talking about triple digit water temperatures in the Gulf, and so that had us asking, well, what's happening with our Great Lakes? They're like freshwater oceans. Well, when Al Roker was here in town, we took a walk through Detroit to specifically talk about how our changing climate impacts not only our Great Lakes, but the weather you experience every day. This is Detroit's national natural air conditioner and, and, and heat pump. So if this starts warming, that throws everything else out of whack. This past winter alone is alarming. We experienced the lowest ice levels ever across the Great Lakes since we started keeping records. These lake water temperatures are warmer than ever. So uh, I think that is going to be a real game changer as far as just the general environment for, for the Detroit area. Here is a quick look at the science behind our Great Lakes. In the short term, warmer water temperatures allow for more lake effect snow, theoretically, because if the lakes aren't frozen over, winds come across the lake, pick up the moisture, and then cool off, giving you more snowfall inland. But before you start banking on a better chance for a white Christmas, in the long term, it will probably mean less snow. As the lake waters warm, you'll probably have less cooling once that moisture laden air comes across the Great Lakes onto the land. As the lake warms, that is going to cause more problems as far as organisms in the lake, whether it's a, a, a native seafood or it's algae causing greater algae blooms because of a warming a lake temperature. So we know that much. We know climate change is causing that. So before we get too excited that the lake is getting warmer and you can go swimming in it a little right. earlier in the summer, I mean, there are things that we should probably be doing individually to try to combat climate change. Absolutely. Look, everything from uh, trying to switch over from fossil fuels to, to uh, electrification, we all want that lush green lawn. Well, that lush green lawn takes a lot of water. Mm -hmm. you you know, maybe what they call xeriscaping, where it's less green and more natural uh, turf or plantings. Uh, you know, or so, rain barrels. Or, or rain barrels, to, you know, to collect all that rainwater that, that, that we get. You know, there are so many little steps that we can take that add up individually, that will add up for the collective good to help us combat uh, climate change. Let's start out west where we've got plenty of sunshine, but also a lot of intense heat. So you and I, we forecast the weather, we right. present it every morning, but there is a distinct difference between weather and climate that not everyone really knows about. Kind of gray for some folks. Right, so so Ashley, you've got kids, right? Yes. Okay, ones. so uh, I, I describe the difference between your daily weather and your climate like your kids. Your kids have a personality, okay? That's climate, okay? That's the overarching person that that, per, that kid is. That daily mood can go from zero to 60 at any moment. That's weather. More and more, it's very easy to point to these extreme weather events and say, hey, climate change. Well, the next time my toddler <laughs> is having a tantrum, I'm going to remember that analogy. There you go. All righty. <laughs> So back out here live, I think all the parents out there can relate to that, but all of us that live in Michigan, whether you have kids or not, I think can relate to the fact that we want to keep these beautiful lakes so pristine. I mean, Lake Erie is just absolutely gorgeous on this Friday morning. And so we need to take every any little step that we can and I or any little, you know, step that we can in the right direction that is. And I have to say one of the most impactful statements that Al said to me was that 30 minutes using a gas-powered leaf blower for 30 minutes puts more pollutants in our atmosphere than driving an F-150 for 3,500 miles. So we have, you know, every little thing we can do individually really will have a larger impact here on our globe and specifically here in Michigan.